So we have had a lot of stimulus, uh, group formats, uh, the interview, lots of ideas, exchanges, and uh, we are getting ready for our lunch break. And before that, uh, I think we can take a little bit of time, um, just a few minutes uh, for, you know, questions uh, or uh, thoughts uh, that you may want to share in the larger group uh, right now. No, we'll have a chance to do it several times at different moments. But now, if there is something that you'd like to share about thoughts, experiences, processes, it's, it's really process at work no? all the time. That's the way I view this, this two and a half days, really. No? Processes at work, different kind of processes on many different levels. So whatever comes into your mind that you'd like to share as thoughts, experiences, whatever. Thank you. Um, I just want to say something about my experience in the small group. And it's really about the importance of that level of personal contact that we're able to achieve with a group of five or six people, which is quite different to the kind of contact that we have in a group this size. And I guess the question I want to ask, rather than going on about it, is how are we going to build on that? How, how are we going to actually, um, not capture exactly, but value the experience of a good level of contact in the small groups and take that on to something that we can, um, well, the English word is extrapolize, but I'm not sure. Is that okay? Right. Fine. That we can extrapolize in, into the wider cultures that we're talking about. Uh, so that's on a, on a on different uh, uh, direction. Uh, I want to share just a metaphor that came up when we, Renata and me, exchanged. I feel sometimes in, uncomfortable when we talk about culture in general on the one side and cultural as something we can uh, facilitate as professionals. And there are different discussions. And the metaphor that came to my mind is uh, there is a uh, a notion, uh, nature heals, the doctor can treat. And uh, compare that with cultural development happens anywhere, like healing. And we don't know what it is about, really. We cannot describe that. We have some ideas about that. I, as a professional, I talk about treatment. This means what can we do to facilitate cultural development and certainly there is not the treatment, as in medicine there is not the treatment. There are many ways of treating and disciplines and you always need a specific case that you really can talk about treatment. And this is a total different discussion than the discussion about healing as such. And I want to... Uh, um, yeah, to draw our awareness to that, that we do not mix up these very different levels and styles of discussion. I'm not sure how clearly I'll find the words for this, but for me, culture is not just, it's not a knowable thing, it's an experienced thing. It's something that doesn't always find words and it expresses through somatic experience, embodied experience. And safety and protection in an, any organization comes from the potential to name that experience and co-create a shared meaning around it. See if the experience has meaning for others, what it is. If, there's, if there is a psychological contract 
that includes the potential for embodied experience to have significance within the system, you have safety. And what I'm experiencing in this is a real invitation to stay in my head and to know things. And it's very exciting being in a room of people who all of us are so experienced and we know a lot and I'm already um, stimulated by the immense potential for so many interpretations of TA. It's mind-blowing, especially for someone like me who doesn't work internationally. What I'm finding very, very difficult is the pace of it and the, the lack of potential to really process embodied experience. And the risk for me is if we don't have a way of making meaning together of that level, the, the, th the stuff that doesn't have words, then it becomes individualized. So I experienced fury, anger earlier. I, I have, <laughs> I want to explore the meaning of that, and I did explore the meaning of that. I don't want that to be just Helen Ross's having a, a fit in the corner. For me, it, when I work in organizations, if there's anger in a group, there's often something deeply significant about what's happening in the group and the meaning in the group. So the question I've been pondering is, if I experience anger in this system, what might it mean? How do you, in your frames of reference, make meaning of anger? How, how do you think about anger in, in your systemic approaches? How would you think about it in TA? If you, if you were working in an organization and something like that happened, how might you intervene? How would you think about it in terms of culture? And then as soon as I can say this to you, my adult is, is, is returned. So there's something for me about I don't want to lose the potential of this group to process our own experience of this as a system. Does this sound clear? Yeah. So for me, it's also a very important thing uh, to differentiate between uh, what we mean with culture. Because I see there is the national culture there are, is, is a very, really deep assumptions from growing up. Uh, and here I agree with you, Rosemary. You said before, we cannot change this, or we can change it just very, very slowly, perhaps about generations, about time. But I think uh, a culture of an organization is another thing. I think this is another part of culture. And here is necessary, and I think this is also one way here, to find what are the essential things and what are the, uh, the rules we can have or the assumptions we can have. And I think here is very helpful the TR assumptions. And here we can change things. And we can change things in a faster way, I think. I, I think it's quite interesting what you are saying, Ellen, and I want to pick up on that because I think culture is really mostly unspoken assumptions. And then there is, of course, all the cognitive parts. And while you were talking, um, and this has been part of my thoughts also since last night when we were having some exchanges, has to do with uh, the feelings that people may experience that we each of us may experience in uh, dealing on many different levels. And what I was thinking while you were talking about the anger and the stimulation, and in a way it's something that, not in the same words, but there is some kind of worry or uh, thoughts that Trudy also has expressed. And I was thinking, what is the obstacle here 
that you may be perceiving from your own frame of reference that we Italians, because I've been investigating with several Italians about the anger and uh, the, uh, in, in a way, the, the discomfort in terms of uh, not being able to express a potential. So I pondered and asked the Italians, uh, to some of the Italians, if they shared uh, this kind of perception, which seemed to come from a different culture. And they looked at me and said, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, some of the Italians said, it seems that things are sort of being processed more or less along the same line that we usually experience, which in fact is not does not correspond to reality, you know, from what you're saying. So I think it's a very interesting, I'm really glad that you brought this up, because I think it's a very interesting issue. Uh, and I think it brings us to what is the obstacle here now that some of us are experiencing in terms of using as, as much as possible the, those two days for uh, for professional, personal development, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and what is it that, uh, in in what way, some of us are contributing to this obstacle? Some of us, or some of our frames of references, are contributing to this obstacle. Not, I don't think it's personal. I think this is part of the creation of a new system where we can have shared realities. So I think it's a very good point, and I think this brings us to a meta level, you know? So, And I think the interesting thing will be to move all the time between the upper level and the meta level. So I think you're bringing a very interesting and meaningful uh, issue here. For me, it was an interesting discussion because we were different cultures in the same gr group. Um, I'm also experiencing a sense of confusion because I'm not sure what is expected um, in the process. I somehow feel sometimes this bigger room seems to be a bigger parent. And when I work in the smaller room, I don't know what is expected here. So. Uh, some of us feel overadapted, or some of us feel rebellious. Or, so it seems to be a sense of confusion for me, because I hear more of we are talking about culture rather than as a phenomenological experience of how we are impacted by it as a group, as an individual, as a group. So that's where I am. Um, I wanted to say that um, I am experiencing um, my breath. Uh, my breath is different because the pace of the ideas and the pace of what's going on, plus the different languages, um, plus the there's the sound of the sound, my sound, and then the echo. I hear the translation as echo. So there's a kind of echoing happening. Um, and that is, ex I'm experiencing that as a change in my breath and an experience in here, in my lower lungs. And then I wonder then, um, at that biological level, um, whether am I trying to find a equilibrium level that I can hear all the different cultures, if you sort of the different voices, voice cultures. Does that make sense? That's what I wanted to say. That's what I'm noticing. I'm probably expressing some of the, the the things that have been already said. I'll I'll do it in my words. I've I think, and I feel that discussion on culture starts from the point when you describe yours, you describe 
how you are, how you live, what you, where you are. And then com comes the comparison. I compare it with my experience. And it's that's the moment when, when there is, is something. And then that's the moment when, when there is an intellectual thinking, um, um, activity in my head saying, well, hmm, that's interesting. Hmm, it might work for me too, or it might. But it comes from the, 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 the lived experience that is shared. So describing and then comparing. Technology also gets in the way of the idea of conversation, does it not? So, so I've just described my breath. What's happened to my breath? So now, how does it happen? If we're talking about creating our culture here, not with it, where you're from, in this. So now, what? In your frame of reference, would it be you describing your breath? Is this how we would have this? What happened when you said that you you uh, have uh, you, you talked about your breath is that I became conscious about how I feel in my stomach. Okay. Yeah. So the comparison yes. rose there, and I think that it's 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 a good example of what I I I'd say because these clear clear experiences of different cultures and how things are seen and and perceived uh, they can. Uh, make a clash with my assumptions and then there is something new that comes. We had yesterday a lovely piece of discussion about the Indian culture and all the, the different beliefs and spirituality and the gods. And the way you expla explained how people can use parts of them for their own purpose was a, like a bunch on my head and hey, good, oh, goodness, what is happening? So I think this is the, the clash of a positive um, confrontation of, of different different things that come and what people say or express about culture, about themselves, have an impact. And I think that was what you were saying too. Uh, I think that what we are dealing with really is with uh, uh, um, I, I don't like to use the word clashes, but I want to use it in a positive sense, the way you are using it. I think it's really dealing with uh, 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 a brusque contact with different assumptions on life, on power, on education, on different sets of things. And I think that uh, really uh, this is something, uh, if we want to make this encounter meaningful and making meaning, as Helen was saying, I think that this is going to be part of what we need to go through, uh, part of the brusque clashes between and among uh, different assumptions and different conceptions about basic things like you know, power, as I was saying before, uh, um, relationships, uh, education, etc. So I think that we are uh, right in at the beginning of a process, and I agree that first there is the uh, first there is the description, at, especially when you are dealing with different cultures, or there is an attempt of description, which is never really understood totally. We, we have to go through that, that the descriptions are only part of what is being conveyed, the mental descriptions. It's much more the descriptions and what we go through in an unaware and unconscious way that helps us to make meaning. And we have very, I think we have different, very different paces on an individual level, on a group level, and on a cultural level even though we have what we are sharing and what we have in common is our TA culture, which is something, <laughs> it's not much. So that's my, my point of view at, the, at this time. And if there is something else that one of you or some of you want to share before we go out for lunch, I think we all need to be patient with ourselves and with the rest of the group and different people and process this patience or impatience.
all the time. I think we need to keep on processing that. And I just, uh, and thinking about that systemically and at the meta level, I'm wondering if pace is one of the essentials of culture, mm -hmm. given it relates to breathing. It's some idea. Yeah. I wonder if. I wonder if pace, pace is an essential, this underlying, because it relates to our breathing. Mm -hmm. oh, systemic point. I just, I'm just sitting here listening and I'm, I'm aware that I feel really tired suddenly and um, I'm relating that back to my experience when I was sitting talking about working in the Middle East and that actually I feel tiredness quite a lot when I'm there and I'm thinking about that culturally that the impact of the culture and the system on me you know it's, it is like a, a false field you know, and that makes me tired, and I'm just a force field, force field, <laughs> like a driving, restraining forces, um, which is just really important learning, actually. Mm. And that's the same experience here, because there's lots of different cultures. Mm. Mm, interesting. Okay, we'll see you in one hour. We'll see you in one hour, is that okay? Yeah.